Welcome, guys, uh, to the AIA Digital Marketing Podcast. Today, we've got Joe, hey. Wade, Olivia, hey. Senior Performance Digital Marketing Manager here at Australian Internet Advertising, and also Alyssa, also hey. Digital Marketing Performance Manager. <laughs> They're my buttons, Joe. You don't get to touch. Don't push my buttons, push Joe. He's a button buttons. pusher. Is a button. I'll just move that down because it's important. It's not the right thing. Um, so today, guys, the episode is about the different styles or types of videos that you can run um, to promote your business, whether that be on a landing page or through social media. Uh, there's quite a few different styles that we need to get through, so I will uh, quickly list them out, and then I think we'll probably pick a few just to dive into a little bit deeper, the more popular styles of videos that people make um, and promote through social media. But before I do that, how is everyone today? Joe? Good. It's, that's good. I'm glad to hear that you're good. Mate. Yeah, it's an emotive response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What kind of emoji are you feeling? Sleepy face. Mm. Just had a pretty big lunch. This is how I feel. It's been a big week. Have you been Spooky. fasting, have you? Sure. Uh, Wade, how are you? Pretty good. <laughs> For getting up at 5.30. All right, if yeah. I'm not allowed to press the buttons, you're not allowed to press the buttons. <laughs> Olivia? I'm feeling good. Thank you. Oh, good. That's good. How yes. are you feeling? I'm also um, pretty good. Thank you. That's I, so good. I, I know. It's a bit of a lazy Friday afternoon, to be honest. We've all been to a team lunch and uh, probably eaten way too much food. Alyssa, how are you? You're going to have to speak into the mic. Can't good. hear me. I'm good. We need another mic. I know. That's cool. So Alyssa's good too. Fantastic. All right. There are, as I said, quite a few of them. So we will run through. To be exact, there's 20, believe it or not. And uh, number one is native or UGC ads. What the hell are they? <coughs> Native or UGC generated or user generated content. Uh, if you haven't heard about this by now, then uh, obviously you haven't really been doing. Then you should quit or hire us on social media. If you haven't heard about them or done any for your business, you definitely have seen them. If you spend any time on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook, or most of the other platforms, um, they are basically uh, people that say that they have used your products or your services, and that they've had a positive experience recommending other people do it. They're not always influencers. They can be collaborators. Uh, but What's the difference? Influencers are people that are paid just to say that they've used a product um, to try to get their, their followers, the people they have influence over, mm. to be persuaded into trying a product. Has so anyone here ever been influenced or persuaded by Absolutely. UGC? Yeah. What totally. was it? Couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I just buy so many. That often. <laughs> under the radar. It's under the radar. No, I buy it's a lot of stuff. Yep. been influenced by people. Yeah. I mean, you see it all the time. I know that I have. I know my missus has. Joe, I'm sure that you have. Probably, yeah. Probably. Yeah. Very impulse impulse uh, responsive. Yeah. yeah. You'll usually see something like, so my friend recommended or I just came across X, Y, Z and, um, you know, I couldn't believe how quickly it worked. And ex Is know. this a UGC for Dr. Pepper? Uh, no. Uh, this is because I needed after my, after my large greasy lunch, I was feeling drowsy. So I thought I'll get some pep in my step. And? Uh, and, and uh, halfway through the can, I feel like it's working. Excellent. Although, so, although 20 minutes after the can, it will no longer be working. And then what's a collaborator? A collaborator is someone who uh, is not an influencer, but has collaborated with the business or the advertising agency to promote your products. Usually they fit into the demographic of your targeted audience. So if you've got, um, you know, um, uh, clothing for plus size women, then you'd have a plus size uh, woman promoting the the clothing mm. um if you've got um you know parts for cars or, or something like that then you'd have like a machine head kind of dude <laughs> robot um, man yeah or you also can um you can go down that road or you can go down the road of um sort of models that are the types of people that people want to be like right so so selling the, the dream yeah selling the dream young attractive kind of sexy angle where you know maybe some older people will be like i want to feel young and sexy again so i'm going to go and buy this product you know that's kind of generally kind of like a motorbike kind of like a motorbike yeah which um worked very well for me nice really. so those yeah. are the kind of ads yeah. that you've bought from in the past olivia no but what i'm getting at is the main <laughs> difference is some people are leveraging their followers Versus people who don't have followers and you're just picking them purely for the way they look or the demographic they fit in. Yeah. That's the main difference is that some of them have followers and you're using them for their followers. Yes. Yeah. And they're, they're Tapping into their market. And, yeah. and they're not generally needed to uh, for paid ads. When you use paid ads, usually it's a collaborator. So they don't have an audience of their own. You you pr boost their, mm. their, mm. their Influencer marketing sort of its own thing. <coughs> Correct. Usually much more expensive. How effective is influencer marketing? Depends what you're selling. Depends who the influencer is. You need to look yeah. at engagement rates, not just their um, follower count. 
Yes. Okay. People can buy. buy they followers. can buy followers as we're well gonna, as buy likes. We're going to buy some to. followers for AIA's yep. birthday. Quick, quick point to cover off here too, we're guys. Not we've do got that. Um, we've got a huge uh, list to get through, but just very quickly with UGC in the health uh, industry, there's some new laws coming out in Australia um, in July. In July, meaning that you cannot promote health products by giving recommendations um, and testimonials. So that means you can't pay influencers to promote your health products and um, no gifts. No they can't talk about their personal experience with a product. Yep. They could say, this is the product, this is what it does. You cannot at all talk about, Yeah, this is what it achieved for me. Yeah, exactly. Is so that to so say that you can't um, receive money for, for that promotion, but if you right. are a you know, they re real person and you have your follower account and you go to HCF and you have a great experience with your dentist, yep. are you allowed to promote that on social media? Yeah. You just can't be paid for it. They yeah. don't want, like, if you're going to buy something like that, you should be getting it based on a medical need, not because you've been influenced to do it by someone. Yep. So exactly. that's what they're trying to rule out. Wishy washy. Okay, ad number two, guys, is a demo. A demonstration video shows the product or service in situ, highly effective when kept simple, extremely and w uh, extremely well performing. What was the name of that one? A demo, demonstration. Oh. So, so demonstrating the product. If it's clothing, putting it on, taking it off, going out in it, putting it on it's and taking it off. Yeah, man, definitely. Like think about the wearing it, thinking about. Th oh yeah, that's also I think a it's demo. Wetsuits, rashies, <laughs> um, clothing, things like that. Most useful if you have something that is maybe new to the market. People don't understand. Yes. Uh, for example, there might be uh, we have this client that is um, something you plug into your car. Yes. Um, what is it? Cigarette socket. Yep. And they're showing how easy it is that you plug that in, then you can play music by Bluetooth. You need a demonstration for that because people are going to think, okay, is it super difficult to set up in my car? Maybe it's too much for me. I it think work? it's more useful for products like that as opposed to taking on and off clothes. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why. The, uh, <laughs> speak for yourself. <laughs> well, I was just thinking about the, the shark skin promos that we've yeah. recorded recently where we've taken the rashy off and put it on, shown how easy it is, demonstrated yeah. how easy it is to get the get the clothing off. The sand free just towel. To, just, just established. Yeah, sand free. <laughs> but that's a, yeah, yeah, no, that's a good, good one. Good example. Yeah, it's yeah, a big yeah. claim, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> Next big one, unboxing. We do we do uh, a lot of unboxing videos here. Um, basically, for most of the products that we promote, you demonstrate unboxing. I, I, I feel like it's an emotional, like it's a... It's 100%. You know, it's Christmas it's, it's every time yeah. you see it. People and you get love to watch unboxing. other people have it. And a lot of money's gone into unboxing by big brands like the Apple and Samsung. You know, when you get the f new phone. Yeah. Oh, all the packaging. That's it's an experience. It's it, it's perfect. The, so the, the amount of suction when you take the lid off just slides off. It's just so smooth. The best yeah. thing about buying something new, right, is mm. is having that thing. But yeah. the second best thing about it is getting it in the mail. Yeah. Yeah. When like it turns up. It. You open the package, yep. you get the, you know, the smell. Double the whatever. joy. Double the joy, right? So, um, you know, uh, dem you know, unboxing, demonstrating to people that that kind of feeling that they can experience through unboxing the product when it arrives uh, can be quite powerful. You guys agree? Yeah. It's all about Christmas, birthdays. It's gift giving to yourself, if yes. not to someone else. And who doesn't love that? Right. It also gives that experience, right, of the, the quality of the packaging, of the care that's attention to detail that's gone into it yep. when you do receive it and you're ready to, you know, mm. take that first step in this new product and having it, mm. your iPhone, right? Your the new quality, life. The quality of the, of the packaging mm. goes a long way to the, the experience of the quality of the product. Right. Yeah. Every it, mm, I was going to say, especially if it's slightly more expensive because yes. yes. you're also buying into that experience. Like yes. you said, you go to a fancy store, they wrap it up beautifully, you've got a nice gold sticker on it. Mm. Your yep. that experience is part of it. That's that's marketing, right? Like it's it's every single step of the experience, all the senses, the feel, the touch of the box, the smell when you open it. The you ever you watch uh, like you know toddlers and young children uh, at Christmas? Yes. The box. It's all about it's all about unwrapping. I watched my two nieces for right. years just go just tearing into the pa into the next present. Yeah. It's like that's open. You got that cool. <coughs> next one. <laughs> next one. They yeah. just go crazy, and it's all in the unwrapping. And then they make a cubby house out of the box that costs nothing, and leave the three hundred dollars <laughs> worth of toys to the side. Excuse me. Branding and narrative. What the hell? This modern advertising approach employs storytelling to elicit an emotional connection between the brand and consumer. Rather than direct selling, this style uses elevated status and psychological responses associated with the brand to gain brand loyalty and give the purchase autonomy back to the consumer. It's interesting. Mm. So in a, in a lost podcast that we've recently done and in no way recorded... Mm. We were talking a lot about it was brand, a good one brand. It was a good chat. It was nice. It was good. Unfortunately, we didn't record it. No. Um, we it talked a lot about the storytelling and the narrative that goes into brand awareness ads, mm. right? Wade, you were pretty, uh, pretty um, 
uh, involved in that podcast. Definitely. Um, and talking a lot about exactly that, right? The story behind the brand mm. and the and the. I don't know, you go. Well, Thanks. some of the, some of the greatest ads, you know, isn't uh, even about the product. It's about the feeling, the association, the status, the lifestyle, the new version, the better version of you mm. when you buy the product. Mm. And like <coughs> that's modern advertising. Came yeah. in around the 1950s and it plays on emotions and psychological needs and wants. Yes. And that's why it's so powerful. Like every single perfume or cologne ad, mm -hmm. if it's for men, it's like here's an attractive man with all these nice women around him. He's rugged. Mm. I feel like that's what Johnny Depp walking through the desert with a wolf around there somewhere, and then yep. sauvage. Sales of that <laughs> perfume right up there. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I think that um, it. This is where you know, like, it's complicated because when you're you're chasing a return on ad spend through marketing for clients, mm. you know, especially SMEs. You know, not when you not the big blue chip clients, but but more so also the SMEs. They don't want to hear impressions and branding; they want to see sales, mm. right? And 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 the lowest hanging fruit, the quickest way to get those sales is with these really direct, straightforward unboxing UGC. This thing's works. This is how it works. It worked for me. Buy one. You know, or, or the the slash price was seventy fifty mm. now. Limited time. Buy now. A demonstration of how the products work. You know what I mean? Like the. Um, the really straightforward and obvious this is or even a just a straight up offer yeah yeah so so this then is moving into another thing where you get um roll on benefit over time like a bigger benefit potentially by associating your product with uh human emotions and mm. and, and things like that um for for bigger brands definitely it's important because um you're talking then about like market share and mm. and trying to kind of position your, your brand with a certain kind of um uh, appeal you know and customer life lifespan mm. too yes you know if you create that connection yes you got the brand loyalty yeah it'll come back over and over again totally right and and we all know that people buy on emotions emotions sell um you know um uh, especially you never see a mercedes ad where they talk about the cylinders and the fuel consumption right or the the, the spark plugs it's always like a happy family cruising along the the uh you know ocean the, the road autobahn the autobahn with the you know it's just it, being happy Right. Yeah, so that's that's kind what's of that. what's an, one last thing. What <coughs> is one of the biggest buzzwords in advertising in the last five years? Because that's really about storytelling. Anyone? You got me stumped. A bit more authenticity. Yeah, that's yeah. the big seller. We don't want fakes. We don't want corporations that are ruining the planet. Blah blah blah. Yeah, this is our story. This is why you should jump on our boat. Are you talking also like authenticity, like noble cause, like exactly. ethics and morals and yeah. things like that? You don't want to be a big, you know, seeing where where your product comes from, yeah. how it's made. Are, are you polluting the the planet and are you being exploiting greedy people. and exploiting people and things like that? That's that's kind of there's definitely more of a lean towards that. And it's kind of in line also with um, cookie-less advertising, which is a whole nother, I think we've That's a whole another 20-part podcast. Yeah. Um, all right, so branding and narrative. Then the next one is hype reel uh, montage. What's that? Uh, Good question, Wade. Olivia. Yep. So uh, that is a compilation of different clips put together to give the impression that tons of people are using this product and build up hype around it. So you could put together a ton of UGC videos. And yeah, the whole idea is meant to be, this is the it brand. Yeah, mm. you're hyping it up. Yeah. Right, you're trying to create hype. You feel like, you know, you're going to get FOMO if you don't do this. You're going to, you know, everyone's doing it. So then that's that age-old um, persuasion technique of... Um, uh, of um, Social proof. Uh, social proof and also consensus. We've got, um, a, we've got a brand new client, actually, who does walking tours of Sydney, right? Mm. Various um, historical areas and goes through the what happened here back in, you know, 1950, 60, 70, whatever. Um, but on the hype reel aspect, right, the guy does the Vox Pop. So right after every um, every walking tour, he'll grab two or three people and say, hey, can you just give us a, a quick rundown of your thoughts and feelings right now? How mm. did you find the tour? What was good? What didn't you like? All that stuff, right? Really don't have to focus these types of ads just on e-commerce or online purchases or buy now um, types of businesses, right? There are massive opportunities for any kind of, even yeah, service-based businesses, a walking tour, a theatre production, whatever it might be, to say, these are my customers. These are your network. These mm. are the people who you know who have a really great time, a really great experience mm. when they do this walking tour, when they enjoy my service, when they whatever. And you can push those out across the board with any type of business, I think. Mm, definitely. Why, why are you guys fighting over that water bottle? I think I'm we're trying to move it out of shot. I'm trying to... Wait, Alyssa's, let me know. It's Alyssa's really ugly. Yeah, and it's in front of Alyssa. Oh, just, sorry, just Alyssa. All right, well... Yeah. I'll put it on the floor. Put it on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Alyssa's here observing. 
Uh, while making videos, guys, if you happen to be recording a multicam podcast, make sure you don't put a large water bottle in front, in front of, of someone's, someone's face. face. <laughs> yeah, sorry. You, sorry. <laughs> um, cool. The Hyperreal montage, in my opinion, is a very, very powerful style of video. Um, and it can be used in conjunction with your native style UGC ads uh, because you, you kind of get the feeling that here's one person that has bought and loves this product, here's another person that's bought and loved this product, and then, wow, here's like five more in one video. Um, it really does kind of drive that... that um, it's like that the chef's you know. special. It's yeah. got everything you want in it. That's right. Like, mm. all your problems will go away, like they have for these people. <laughs> you know. um, Hyperreal montage, then hashtag challenge. That is a TikTok specific um, type of video. I mean, it's based on a TikTok that you create that's associated with your brand. Mm. Um, and then you make a visual accompaniment, AKA video to mm. that. And it comes up in the branded, in the hashtag, branded hashtag section of TikTok. Yes. Um, with the intention of spreading brand awareness and perhaps going viral with some kind of dance or action mm. yes. within the frame. It's like the ice bucket challenge ages ago was like raising Murphy. money, I think, for yep. a MS. charity. Yeah, yeah, yeah perfect definitely. example. Yeah, there, and there's I've been a few since the push up, twenty push ups in twenty days. Twenty, 20 push ups in 20. twenty days. <laughs> Slow down, soldier. <laughs> <laughs> twenty push ups a day yeah. for twenty days. So just get out of bed. <laughs> One <basically>. day. <laughs> just, just get out of bed once a day and just get off the couch. Twenty just push ups uh, per day oh. for twenty days, which um. Uh, clearly, <laughs> I have no problem with, you know. Um, yeah, so there's been there's been a few of those, and definitely if you can if you can come up with something that goes viral, uh, you get a lot of as a business uh, free awareness and engagement. Hashtag challenge. What's the next one, guys? Branded um, branded effects, as in that's another TikTok thing, mm -hmm. like making filters, mm. filters, AR, AR filters, filters, stickers, mm -hmm. those, special effects. Thing. So like the um, I'm with France thing when the you know the like when atrocities happen around the world and to show your support, thoughts and prayers, right? Mm. You chuck yeah. up a, a yeah, branded filter across your profile, that sort of exactly thing? Exactly that, mm. but in a commercial. A lot of makeup do. brands do it where maybe they've released a new shade and it's on Snapchat and you, the lipstick shade comes on you using AI. Okay. But you find a lot of bigger brands doing it. Mm. Not so much. Not so much. So so yeah, it would be medium. better for established brands, I think. Yeah. Unless you're an influencer and then you can make your own TikTok. Filters yes. and then people follow you because they like your filters. <coughs> Interview style. Longer form in nature, it is a great way to communicate the company's mission. Discuss products and services as well as the features and benefits that the consumer can gain from buying. How long would an interview style video be? That is totally up to you. You know, some longer videos are good. It depends what you're talking about. Mm. TikTok's now got the how how long's ten, ten minutes. minutes. Yeah, the yeah. Whether or not it's an engaging and exciting <laughs> interview. You know, if you're talking about the next um, pill that will cure cancer, mm. people are going to watch an hour of that. So mm. it depends on, there's a couple of factors there as with always, right? But the product and the audience. Mm. Absolutely. And who's going to watch it and the content. Yeah. And what's, what is the purpose of the interview and what are you trying to achieve with it? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit, it kind of overlaps with maybe a testimonial video if you get a happy client in. Yeah, but um, interview is going to have two people and it's going to be a back and forth. Yes. Testimonial straight to camera usually. Yeah, cool. Cool. Um, all right, fantastic. What uh, number are we at? We are now at 10. Woohoo, halfway. halfway. Can halfway. we have a sample, please? At the halfway point. Push the button. Baby. Halfway <laughs> point. Oh, that's <laughs> a <wrong button>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, halfway. Woo! All right, calm down, guys. Um, what's next? Day in the life. Livy? You Very know good all about these. <laughs> I still have to edit that. Yes. Um, good for TikTok. Yep. And? Stories. Instagram. Yeah. Facebook, Instagram, stories. Uh, you can use it for a bunch of different things, but it's essentially showing a day in your life or cherry picking the best parts of your day. You can use it for a brand, like what we were trying to do the other day is showing, you know, what we might do in a typical day. Mm. Um, a lot of influencers do stuff like that, so it's not so much branded, but mm. it just gives a really personal feel to any of your advertising where you're actually following around a real person mm. and getting an insight into you know what they do in their day. So it could also be aspirational, say it's something that you really want to do or mm. be. Um, yeah. So it should be like a minimum eight hours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, d I, yep. I think I've done the longest day in the life ever, 168-hour film. 
why why do this 160 uh, hour film yeah i film my whole life 24 hours a day for a week through an iphone on my face so mm. was that exactly I've got a what we're talking about yeah was the <laughs> iphone covering your eyes yes i could so i could only see through the actual the camera yeah yep it was wild. <coughs> How did your eyes feel? It does sound wild. Well, when I took it off, um, I went for a swim down at Bronte Beach and my, my long distance vision wasn't lining up for maybe an hour or two. Yeah, okay. Um, but it felt great. I, I couldn't wash wet my hair, so my hair was all crazy out of beard. I looked like a madman. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my phone plastered to your face. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> going going to the art so gallery, the, going out. It's the, crazy. The day in the life thing is actually not something new. The day in the life tag that's been added to, and and also how it's been edited to be more like bite sized and entertaining for you know the TikTok style of consumption, um, is new. But the day in the life thing is not new. Influencers have been documenting their days um, for for years now. You know, um, Gary V or, or or whoever else. A lot of the videos they upload are just videos of them recording a part of their day. They'll be talking mm. to someone on the street. They'll be sitting in their office speaking to speaking to someone else, you know, and they're, they're just recording the, a day in, a part of a day their their day. Oh you know, my like, god, you got it out. Well, a <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so it's like a doc it's like a mini doco mm. in a sense, right? <clears throat> Cinemagraphs, cinema cinemagraphs, cinematographs. Cinem is it cinnamon, 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 cinnamon rolls. Stop it. Cinemagraphs. I'm quite proud of how quickly I said that. A combination of video or photographs or photographs only. The cinemagraph is used to communicate technical aspects of the goods or services or more detailed product information can be used in combination with motion graphics. Typically under 60 seconds. Uh, you can, depending on where you're deciding on promoting it. By the way, guys, um, we will upload all of this information for you where we post this on our blog because... Free, free, free. Free. <laughs> free. <laughs> Download now. Um... It's going because you need to know what kind of ra uh, aspect ratios for the different placements if you're going to be promoting it on social media. You know, for stories, you want the, the tall 9 by 16 Facebook um, feed, you want square, mm. etc. cetera. So Alternatively, you can also hire AIA and we'll do it all for you. <coughs> That's true. That's the idea, guys. We give all this stuff away, but then um, you come running to us when you can't be bothered to do it and figure it out yourself. That's <laughs> the generally. experts. Um, so this is something you're talking about, Wade, with a combination of both stills and... Um, and moving yeah i mean like think of perhaps uh, a slideshow style video yes um or you know you can have a product shot with um different uh technical information yes. alongside yep um i guess it's kind of good if you're a client or a business that doesn't have a lot of content yes um, and you can kind of crystallize it with these photographs or, you know, short videos as a combination. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So you're talking about like a video that's made up of a bunch of different images using motion graphics to slide one in and then the next. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. <coughs> uh, motion graphics, 3D modeling, computer generated. It can be used to go beyond normal photographic means. Excellent for technical details or to add visual excitement to a video. Uh, these are hard work. Especially the three D, three D modeling stuff. You, you, you guys can pick it up if you're out there. You run a business. Just download Cinema Four D and figure it out. <laughs> Spend the next ten years working. Oh, and don't video. Yeah. And don't forget to retire um, <laughs> while it's rendering. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. If your computer's worth anything less than about fifty grand, it's going to take three months to render. <laughs> that's that's one of the downsides. Uh, I'm probably exaggerating there, but these probably. can these can be very good for demonstrating the benefits of a product. Mm. Um, you know, there's there's definitely a couple of examples I can give you. One is for um, a teeth aligning company where we just demonstrated the benefits of the product by showing a mouth with uh, crooked teeth and then the teeth um, moving into place, right? Which is really what people want when they buy teeth aligners. Uh, so that's a very successful ad. And another one is where we have a clothing apparel business, a water sports apparel business, and they have uh, water sports wear that they use that's triple layered. So it's like... Um, Probably. <laughs> apparently it feels like three layers. It might. <laughs> When we filmed uh, one of our um, one of our Esteemed collaborators, colleagues. yeah, who collaborated this morning, wearing it doing a UGC, said it, it feels like three layers, which was hilarious. <laughs> but um, uh, we we showed that we used uh, um, 3D modeling to actually you know have have some fabric there and split it up into three layers and and actually 
um, use little graphics to show what those three layers were and the benefits of those. We got within so the, the layers. Exactly. So to demonstrate and portray the message as effectively as possible in a way that people can consume. Um, you know, when you, you start talking to people about like, you know, titanium, f infrared, nano nanoparticles, they just, they just switch off, right? So um, being able to demonstrate it with, with uh, 3D. Show, data, don't tell. Yeah, is, is very effective. It's really good for like educating people around your product or service, right? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, um, without going too far off track, the moment you start making people think too hard, they switch off, especially if you're promoting this stuff on social media. If they're not fully committed and, and very interested in what it is that you're – if you're trying to gain awareness and, and get people to become interested and, and win engagement and you're making it difficult, their brain has to work too hard to figure out what you're talking about, they're gone. Right? And so is their wallet. Yes. <laughs> Another thing with that as well is you've got like 0.2 of a second to try and get their attention to yep. stay. So the best part of your video should be right at the start, otherwise they're not going to watch it. Yeah, that's right. If there is a like a climax um, of your of your movie or of your video, you should take a little snippet of that and chuck it at the front of the video to get people to go, what was that? That right? is a hot take, Billy. You like that? Thank you, Wade. It doesn't get better. <laughs> Thank you very much, mate. I, I knew you'd like that. Next uh, style? Uh, time lapse. Joe? What are they good for? You <laughs> what, what's the time lapse, Joe? Time mm. lapse. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Alyssa, do you know what a time lapse is? I do, but like I don't know how to explain it. Well, well try. I don't know. I would have thought day in the life would have been a very good thing time to put a time lapse day. against. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nobody Generally. wants to watch eight hours of your life. It's showing movement it's over a long yeah. period of time, but it's sped up. Yeah. yeah. But what would that be good for? No, a time lapse is uh, is like one one shot. No, not necessarily. A time lapse can also Could be, be like a photo a, every an hour. hour video that you've sped up so it plays in one minute. But That's why would you use a time lapse? Uh, building things, yep. demonstrating things, showing things that take time. The, the, the teeth example I gave you before is sort of like a time lapse. It's, it's, it's a mini time lapse. happen over time. But I don't know if you're selling fertilizer <laughs> and you have a plant in a windowsill, record it for three months. Like and every show day, the take lines. And show it grow really quickly. I don't know. There's probably a lot of examples. So used. many. You would have seen a lot in nature documentaries. You and know when there's too stuff. many examples, so you can't actually think of any? This is one of those mm. times. Yeah. Trying to see how you're anyway, going to you make like take that back to shark skin again. <laughs> time <laughs> lapse is... saying shark skin. Yes, yeah, yeah. Time lapse is great to, s great to show change. Yes. That's what it's good for. Uh, yeah, change over a longer period of time in a short period of time, right? Compressed time. Yeah, linear. You got compressed air and we got compressed time. And next on the list is... Yeah. Green screen or black screen or blue screen or whatever colour screen you like, but typically people go with green. Why, wait? Why do people You've go got green? the cheat sheet in front of you. I don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> no, but I'm saying what's with the green? Um, well, you wouldn't choose any other colour besides green or blue. Mm. It's a chroma key and mm. it's for removing the background. Is the blue screen still called a green screen or is it called a blue screen? It's called a blue screen. Okay. Gen the reason why that particular green is used is because it's not found in nature or very minimally. So it's yep. the one color you usually have that you can just remove and it won't affect the rest of what you're trying to shoot. Whatever you're shooting from. And of it? if you're shooting from something green, you use the blue. Okay, cool. Uh, green screen uh, used to insert people or products into any space or location that may not otherwise be available. Now, with this, um, it's important to understand that it is very hard to shoot anything on a green screen and then make it look like it wasn't shot on a green screen. It's That's true. Um, mainly because of lighting. Is that right? It's Wade? all about lighting. Yeah. So generally, if you, go, if you know what you're going to be putting in the background of the green screen prior to that, mm. study the lighting mm. and try and recreate that when you're shooting in front of the green screen. That's yep. definitely a key to matching it. Yep. You can do it in post, but it's... When you say do it in post, it's never as good yeah. as when you're doing it when you shoot. Not that doesn't take away though from the um, the benefits of shooting on a green screen. Even though people know you're shooting on a green screen, you can still make some really cool and fun and interesting, entertaining videos. It doesn't have to be Mar Marvel Studios quality, you know. Yeah. It, Zoom uses it. Yeah. Mm. Like, and it works. There's yeah. a TikTok green screen filter as well. Exactly. Yep. So it's definitely coming into the mainstream and yep. made way more accessible and plenty of creative options. Well, I like that we've made a few ads on green screen uh, yes. where you just really leaned into the fact that it's obvious you're on a green screen. Thank you, Joe. Guys, we had a technical glitch. We were out for a moment, but we are now back. Uh, Wade, thank you for your... Um, uh, continued support. Diligence, continued support and uh, technical... 
um, know how. You truly are an oracle Woo. in this office. Could you stop doing that with the camera? No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, th- I don't know where we cut out, but I think we were talking about two camera, which is the subject speaks directly to the camera, uh, which engages the consumer on a personal level. Great for offers and CTAs. This is something that is hard to do if you haven't done it before. If you're not experienced in it, you might find that at the moment you look into the lens of that camera, all the words you remembered, you've suddenly forgotten. Where do you find examples of that? I'm thinking, I'm right at the top of my head, right? Political ads mm. often are very, very much down the... Down the... Barrel. Barrel. Thank down you. the barrel. Yeah. I thought you were looking down the barrel. when Down you the, the barrel, Daryl. Down the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> I could see you from over there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, look, I mean... A lot of kind of those uh, selfie videos where people are doing the, the UGC, the raw UGC footage is also to camera. Anytime really when you're just, you're not, you know, there's the interview style thing where the camera will cut between two people. You're, you're breaking the camera. fourth wall. That's what you're doing. Mm. Mm. You're connecting directly with the audience by looking into the lens. Yes. It's like you're looking into the audience's eyes, yes. perhaps even soul. All right. Oh, that's, uh, that's deep. Thank you, Wade. Um, to camera is very useful if you really want to convey a powerful message and get them to connect with you, I'm guessing is what we're saying here. But <laughs> you need to be prepared. You need to be prepared because it is hard, harder than most other types of um, footage that you might be taking. True. Um, then you've got the live. So you've got YouTube live, TikTok live, Facebook live. There's a bunch of different lives. Live live. Mm. Um, that, can, that can work well, especially if you've already got quite a few followers. Um, they'll get notifications and you'll get a, a higher level of engagement for a live video. Um, however, it's a little bit of a flop if you don't have many subscribers <laughs> or followers because you've just gone live to nobody and it turns into a video that people watch later anyway. Um, you can <laughs> <laughs> so are, you, are we live right now? Uh, we, we, we did a couple we of lives. We have been live. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but um, luckily we're not because we had a technical issue that um, itchu. Wade is just it, a technical uh, <laughs> attitude. It's, it's, yeah, it's the computer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Picnic error. That was a good one, eh? Thank you. All right, so um, like live, it. then we've got the boomerang. What's a boomerang, guys? Because everyone thinks, seems to think everyone <laughs> should know what a boomerang is. You're up. A boomerang is when, like, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but on camera. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what happens when a camera's on people. Yeah, man. It, it definitely has an effect. Like, I obviously know what it is, but I can't explain it. Okay. Well, this is young and hip. She knows. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's basically whenever you get anyone throwing a boomerang on if, camera. If you just think about a group of young women at a restaurant with a glass of wine in their hand, just going... Yeah. Like a million, that's what it is. Yeah, it's it's like, a, it's it's recorded a very short it's snippet a loop of video. movement. And it just oh, works. there it is. Yeah. There it is. It's not looping the same like three seconds in it, sequence around it, and around though, right? It's three forwards. forward, three back, and yeah. then three forward. That's and why you've got back. the wine glass. Yes. Yeah, so it's just one motion. It's, yes. And then it boomerangs back, right? You so throw something out and it comes back to you like I a boomerang. The terminology has wow. been expanded a little bit. I wonder if that's why bit. they called it that. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah, the terminology has been expanded a little bit now. I've heard other people refer By to By you. It. Yeah, other people too. <laughs> as boomerang videos, as anything that's uploaded to Facebook or social media, especially it's under 30 seconds, um, it just <laughs> it just starts again and loops. It is, like literally, it yeah. is literally an app, Yeah, uh, the boomerang app. It's yeah. an app that was... Um, Developed for Instagram. Yeah, yeah. At one point in the last, whatever, 50 years. Yep. <laughs> and yep. that's where the name comes from. Yep. Fantastic. Yep. Thank you. Instagram in 50 Another years. thing stolen. Uh, by the way, <laughs> within what, the what, last. How does a boomerang help anyone? How does a boomerang video help anyone? Well, it like goes out and hits a kangaroo. Oh, video. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Builds up Jim. your engagement mm. because people rewatch it because they don't know when it starts. Yeah, and it kind of like draws people in. It's a little bit hypnotic, right? I guess. So it gets people's attention and it's unusual to see something moving backwards and forth or looping all the time. It's easy. It's fun. Yeah. And so it can be used as an effective (laughs) conversion tool at the bottom of your funnel when um, uploading UGC ads or maybe demos of products, unboxings, um, things like that. Usually at the bottom of the funnel, after people have engaged with other ads of yours and visited your website, the boomerang video converts very, very well. Behind the scenes. Invite your audience into the process. Personal connection, brand, story, humanize the business. That's good. That is good. I like that. I so like those for organic posts as well, right? As opposed to um, more over advertising. Yeah. Behind the scenes should be behind the scenes. It should be on your posts, your followers of your of your pages. Yes. Be it Facebook, Instagram, whatever. But um, showing people what is happening in your business, right? I've got a there's a, a Sydney motorcycle small uh, motorcycle um, business, right? Imports and sells motorcycles. So whenever he gets a new, um, uh, a new, 
whatever motorcycle set of bikes <laughs> yeah <laughs> make model model of yeah. motorcycle um and he's got you know 50 crates of them he'll get onto facebook and he'll be like hey guys we've got the new model of the whatever in it's just coming out we're unboxing them now we'll have them in your hands in the next like week or two weeks right it's a really yes. really good way of connecting with your followers and the people who know you uh to give them an update to give them something nice and to show what's happening behind the scenes it's nice to say that there's something real and raw behind the front behind the behind the shop front yeah. of businesses right it's good to get into the the kind of um reality tv version of the business the, kind of the, the kind of the nuts and bolts or the gritty the gritty side of the business um so uh this is one of the reasons why posting organically on businesses social media profiles can be difficult for agencies and to outsource that process uh, is also difficult because i'm happy to be promoted ads by your business but if i click through from the ad to your facebook page I don't want to see more ads. I want to know who works there. I want to know what they do. I want to know who's been promoted. I want to know what stock level has just arrived. I want to know if you've moved office. I want to know if you've got an office dog, what its name is. Nice. You know, that's what I expect to see when I look at someone's business's Facebook page or, or Instagram. Yeah, you know. the fun that you have, the culture you have behind the scenes. Yeah, right? that's yeah. right. It can't just be more ads. It, it doesn't make any sense. Um, How many have we got left? Not many. Uh, if any less than 15 minutes worth hopefully <coughs> we've got <laughs> less than Quite five really. worth i believe <sighs> what are you, you going to miss out on joe if we go longer than 15 minutes i've got a, a uh i've got a full bladder a business meeting oh you do that's right phone call he okay. actually has to work uh, oh. for your business what to do uh we're wasting time chop chop we've got five minutes left i love <laughs> lamb chops man they're delicious oh i had pork chops them. last night they were thank god this is on Fantastic. topic yes um vlogging pork chops 622 that's the key Medium heat, six minutes on one side, two on the other, and then two rest. Too far, man. Delicious. <laughs> Let it rest a bit longer, bruh. <laughs> Key stakeholders or influencer video diary that can be used to indirectly associate or promote a product or service. Can also be positioned to communicate the lifestyle associated with the brand. This is vlogging. Not blogging. It's a video blog. Vlogging. A video blog. Cool. It's not that different to the the day in the life yep. kind of thing. It's, it's just a bit longer. Yeah, I it's mean, it's a lot of overlap with a lot of these things, right? I mean, absolutely. All yeah, own. they're all videos. They're, they're great <laughs> to give you some some inspiration, though, right? Like if you go through this and think, oh man, I know I need to get into the video space. I need some videos on my socials. I need to put something on my website. I need to uh, improve the performance of my ads on social media or YouTube ads. What am I going to come up with? It can be really hard for also, businesses. Though. How comfortable are you to like look yeah. down the barrel of a camera and actually? Yeah say something to that camera say something to your audience right yeah. as opposed to hey let me take you around the the office yeah. above the warehouse and show you the team right yeah. this is, is what we do in a day-to-day -day. this is the coffee machine mm. yes this is how often it runs out of coffee yeah etc right yeah. this is how every yeah. time i walk up to it to make a coffee i have to refill the water empty all the coffee grounds it's but it's tough, not as man. high value production as well yeah are like you gonna you stay back and descale everything <laughs> Sorry, Louis. Oh, you don't need everything to make a good quality video. No. Or a video that'll work. I that's think that's right. where some people go wrong is they think, okay, if I don't have all the gear, it's better just not to do anything. I also don't but think it needs to be high quality. No. Like for a lot of this Sometimes stuff. Sometimes it's better if it's worse. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, something raw, like filmed on your phone, right? Yep. yep. It'd be good if the sound quality was good. You can get away with a lot of grainy a video if it sounds good. But why is that, Joe? At the same time, eh, just bad sound quality is tough to listen to isn't it but you no can watch one, grainy, no I watch grainy videos all day exactly watch yeah. grainy dash cam videos of car accidents and stuff right <laughs> like they're grainy <laughs> but also look there's a little bit of the the, the um, advertising sort of psychology behind this as well that you know if you're on social media people go to social media to consume social media posts the things that they expect to see when they get there this is why when facebook first started um promoting ads People were Wade's taking a photo. Fantastic, thanks, Wade. That's nice. He's straight up gone into I mean, that. Right? Just, just doesn't. No warning. Forget this. Forget this. Photo. No warning. Photo. Photo. Yep. Thanks, Wade. What was I? I was on a roll, man. I was talking about. Oh yeah, when Facebook first started promoting ads, people didn't buy off Facebook. They were offended to see the ads in their newsfeed, let alone buying anything from the ads that they saw, because it was not the type of content that they had gone to Facebook to consume. It's not what they expected. Hoodwinked. Hoodwinked, right? So it's the same Great thing movie. now. If you want to get through people's psychological ad blockers that they've got when they look at these social media profiles, uh, you can make raw footage. It can still be an ad, but it has to look like a social media profile. And that's why a lot of these UGC ads that you see are selfie videos. They're not high production. There's no lighting. It's like I've held up my iPhone. It's you know half a meter away from my face. I'm just going to talk to the camera. They can work extremely well. Um, what do you have to do? What do you have to do to make a good one? Good lighting? Natural light's good? And you need to have excellent sound. 
you do need excellent sound. But these days with iPhones and Samsungs, the way that they are, you know, you don't need a lot of equipment. However, no. then there's the other side of it. If you want bra- a branded ad, something that's high quality, then you need to, you need to, it needs to be very good. So to get someone to watch an ad, knowing it's an ad, it has to be a kick-ass ad, right? And you need to get their attention quickly. Vlogging, uh, tips and tricks. Guys, second last one. Show customers new and exciting ways to engage with the brand or product or adjacent activities associated with the product or service. Could be used to illustrate care instructions, for example. Is that what was written there? Yeah, what was the style <laughs> of video, how to... Tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. Well, I, was, I was thinking more like... Um, oh, taking yeah. your you know new four by four out into the woods or something like that you can mm. show people camping mm. right or yeah, basically look, how we, look how much stuff it can yeah. uh, pack in the back for your camping trip that yeah. sort of thing no there's a little button I've over here and it opens yeah. up the thing and whatever yeah. yeah topical your new bike okay you went back to the dealership but you could have done a video on this is how you turn off the wheelie stopper yeah anti-wheelie you know? exactly like yeah, it's, I don't want it's that, extra that features and benefits of a product that you may not normally know yes. straight out of buying Definitely. And when you look at YouTube and you look at these these kind of um, things, like they're so they're so niche and so specific, mm. but they've got tens of thousands of views because every single person who's ever bought that product mm. wants to look it up and find out about Life it and hack. figure out how it works, right? Tips and tricks. Very last one, guys. Lucky last. How to's. Sort of similar, right? This video is an instructional uh, by nature. It is used to demonstrate an action involving a product or service. Do you know who do that very, very well? Who? Kennard's Hire. They do? Yeah. So all of their products now come out with a QR, uh, all of their Hire products come out with a QR code. Right. You scan, takes you to a video to show you how to use that um, equipment. Cool. Yeah, okay. Genius. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Like it. Any other examples? How to's? How to use your Nutribullet. <laughs> did, did you buy <laughs> one of those? No, it's not mine. It's Rossi's. Oh, Rossi got a neutral bullet. Mm. The office got a neutral bullet. In the next episode, (laughs) in the next episode, you get to meet Rossi and Mm. see her neutral bullet in action. Just, just real quick though, is it at the office or is it at Rossi's house? It's right here. Yeah. Mm. So it's going home with her, or I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Time will tell. Check in next episode. Do you want to come in on the weekend and and no? Just if it goes home with her, I'm just going to put the countdown on for the two months until it comes back. Obviously, when she doesn't (laughs) use it. <laughs> it's like everybody who's Ooh. ever bought a Nutribullet. Ooh. Next episode, guys, we'll be Alrighty. talking SEO with one of the best SEO practitioners in the country, if not the world. And we'll also hear Joe's update about his experience with her Nutribullet. Yay! <laughs> Peace out. Thanks. Bye. Bye.